Blue Name is a performance piece that's about one hour in duration. Um, we've been working on this section, which is about 20 minutes in duration, uh, in which Silas's movement is generating the sound that is heard. Uh, so it's a sort of reactive score uh, where the, his movements articulate sound in a number of different ways. Um, so this was something that was of interest to both of us was to find a way of creating work in which we were thinking in a sort of synesthetic manner so that <clears throat> the movement was informed by sound and sound was informed by movement. So a huge amount of what I've done the last two weeks is uh, writing algorithms that are gathering information from Silas's body and then finding a way of kind of tuning them to particular sounds. So uh, what we're hearing is like entirely informed by the choreography and maybe you could tell me if your motion is informed by the yeah, sound. Yeah, well, I mean, it was what was great about these last two weeks was to sort of really understand how the, um, the data that was coming through the cameras and getting sort of processed through the sound machinery was like what factors of it were doing which thing. So as we built it up, I mm -hmm. think I developed certain understandings of not only like um, how the camera was seeing me when I was moving and, and what I could use of that information like to an advantage or to a disadvantage, but just to sort of try and create a palette of movement that could be reactive um, mm -hmm. with the sound score at different times. So I, de I definitely think there was a, a back and forth as we were figuring out like, these are the parts of your body that it's seeing, these are the things um, that it's not understanding. I feel like as, as I was asking you more and more questions about like, oh, is it possible if we do this? Those were, those were kind of attempts to synchronize them even more so mm -hmm. that what you're seeing and what you're hearing are somehow linked together. Well, this is the first time that Jesse and I have worked together, um, I guess, in a couple of years. He provided a, just a musical composition for a piece that I did in New York in 2013. Um, before that, we were both um, on tour with the Merce Cunningham Dance Company, so I think a lot of, in my mind, a lot of the ideas that started coming out through this project kind of had their germination being on tour and talking about the different ways that dance and sound can cooperate or ignore each other or um, so Merce Cunningham and John Cage have this kind of famous collaborative non-collaborative model that I was really interested in um, having a different relationship to um, between dancing and sound. So I think it kind of came out of that initial investigation of, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I think what we're doing is kind of the, the opposite yeah. of Cage Cunningham. So um, they famously described the relationship between music and dance as being um, politically horrible because Traditionally, dance had been used as a sort of illustration of a com musical composer's gestures, and they wanted to disrupt that relationship so that music was not positioned above dance. Mm -hmm. And so the, the way that they did that was by creating music and choreography independently. Mm -hmm. They worked in separate spaces, and the music and the dance would not be combined until the world premiere of the piece. They didn't listen to the music while they were developing the dance or rehearsing and vice versa. The composers did not come into the studio and watch the dancers working. So they were attacking the music dance relationship by completely separating them. And what we're doing is attacking it by like literally fusing them. So we've turned Silas's body into a musical instrument. So he's not dancing to music his dancing is the music. 
um, which is only possible because of like the this amazing technology that's becoming increasingly available for uh, recognizing bodies in space. So we're actually it's a relatively low budget operation considering the craziness of what we're doing here. But yeah. um, Silas is able to just go onto the stage. Our cameras are aware of where his body is in space, and then we've written all these um, algorithms where his body data is converted into sound. You guys were talking earlier about some of the interesting discoveries you made in this process. Um, what were some challenges that you guys um, had like hit on or overcame? Or were, sorry, were there challenges in this process? I think for me at least, like the biggest challenge of doing this is um, using the technology in a way that's not uh, taking away from our artistic intention and you're just thinking about technology the whole time that you're experiencing it. So that meant finding a way of generating sound from his body where it's not like so literal that all you're doing is thinking about this interactive technology system. So that to me was like the dimension that I was mostly focused on was uh, finding a way for that relationship to be complex and subtle and at moments very literal and then at other times way more abstract um, so that we're not constantly thinking about the sort of mechanical logistics but thinking about the dance, the sound, yeah. the environment that's created. Well, and the balance between the sounds that you're hearing and the movements that you're seeing, I think that was something that felt very delicate in a way, and that um, a, a real apparent technological like um, hand would feel overbearing. And so I think there was a kind of delicacy that we were trying to strike with yeah, without overpowering the artwork itself with the technology. Um, other challenges. I still don't know if I can like do it all the way through. So that I guess remains to be seen, but um, finding and I think Jesse's done an amazing job of this, but finding like diff the different qualities that come out of um, different kinds of movement um, was something that I, I just wasn't sure if we were gonna be able to do it. And I feel like we have achieved a lot in a short time actually of just really making a complex environment to inhabit. I don't think that this residency could have happened anywhere else. It was a perfect fit for the studio and for CMU just because of like the many strange different kinds of resources that we really needed in order to be able to build what Jesse needed to be building and for me to be able to work on what I needed to work on. We needed space, we needed cameras, we needed um, weird electrical equipment that I don't understand um, and it just felt like everything was here like oh it's just in the cabinet right there or like oh you need something it's in the drawer mm -hmm. um, we could set up like a kind of research and practice environment that is amazing um, that I think allowed the, the work to push forward and not like be schlepping around all the time like we all always are It's a, a nice thing about working at CMU is just that the, it's a sort of a very flat landscape and it's, I found it to be quite easy to move between different schools and universities and research centers. So we've, we've been hanging out in like at least four different labs in yeah. the last two weeks and talking with artists and computer scientists and roboticists and students and professors. Um, and it's just been, you know, we've been like, Picking it's been great. little algorithms and pieces of technology and putting them in our basket. Yeah. Uh, our cup runneth over. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I sort of think of all 
projects in a kind of continuum of learning and research and kind of where you are up until that point. Um, this particular phase will culminate in a show that I, it's a solo show that I perform. Um, but I also think that it might be the beginning of many other interesting avenues of research, of relationships between movement and sound environments that I feel like we kind of had to stop ourselves a number of times and be like, let's just make something mm -hmm. for this because we could spin out into mm -hmm. so much um, opportunity to yeah. create further things. But yes, initially it is a show where I do dancing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think th this is like step one in our you know, yeah. um, space opera, which will eventually probably involve <laughs> computer controlled lighting and yeah. video projection and um, actual fire. Hopefully. Yeah. One thing that I, I personally wanted to have be a really large part of this, uh, a part of my practice and part of something that I wanted to bring to Jesse is like an, an investigation into rhythm. Since rhythm I sort of think of as the first the first place where you see time and you see like a kind of music in the body. And so that kind of got me thinking about a lot of different ways to express rhythms in the body, um, lots of different kinds of moving your feet around. And so that was something that I brought um, to the table to try and figure out ways of expressing that. Normally it's like a body dancing to a rhythm that's coming from the music, but if the body is making the rhythm, how does it I don't know, it kind of goes around and around for me. So mm -hmm. a lot of what I um, have been thinking about in the kind of dancing that I'm doing for this section is how to express different kinds of rhythms, putting them in different places in my body. And oftentimes they end up in my feet, moving around in space. Um, so that was something that Jesse worked on a lot, I think, figuring out different ways to express the feet. Of yeah, the feet. we did a lot of foot math, but uh, yeah, I mean that was definitely one of the most interesting things. Was um, like I don't think I would have been able to understand what are the important um, parts of motion in the body. It was only working with you where we were able to like right. zoom in on particular aspects of movement. Uh, well, it was, mm -hmm. what's funny about it is when we when you sort of built the first mock up of the system. Mm -hmm. It was amazing, but then it was like, oh, it's like you figure out what you can do and have it not react. And so right. I think that was the way that we kept adding more into it. It's like, oh, I can do this and I can move around in this way and it won't react. And now I feel like the system is so reactive, I don't understand it at all. Yeah, well, me neither. Which is great. Yeah.